Senator Dawson. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Uh, honorable Senators, I rise today to speak about Bill C-11, an online streaming act, and to update you on the key legislative priority, the modernization of the Broadcasting Act. As you know, I, uh, I, I put second reading in June, so this is officially the speech, but uh, we have already started the study, and we're going forward during the next few weeks. Moderniser la loi, c'est la mettre à jour et à préparer l'avenir. Cela doit se faire d'une façon qui tient compte des réalités technologiques, des modèles d'affaires et des dynamiques en jeu dans le système canadien de radiodiffusion d'aujourd'hui. La loi doit établir un cadre réglementaire actualisé avec une orientation claire, les outils nécessaires et la souplesse requise pour maintenir sa pertinence. Bill C-11 is part of a broader set of initiatives put forward by the government to create a forward-thinking digital policy agenda including the Online News Act and the government's commitment to address online safety. Bill C-11 aligns with other acts and legislative instruments and the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedom. It also helps Canada fulfill its international commitments, such as the UNESCO Convention on Diversity of Cultural Expression and the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. On doit moderniser la loi sur la rediffusion de 1991. Cela doit être fait maintenant. That's what our artists and creators and broadcasting industry have been asking for. Bill C-11 is important to Canadians. We have heard from our cultural sectors that the passage of Bill C-11 is important. We have heard from our broadcasting sectors that it is important that the passage be done urgently. While we studied B B C-11 at committee, I'm sure we have all received a significant number of correspondence on this bill as you've all told me, once, and m many of you have told me in the past. However, I want to make a mo uh, uh, take a moment to urge some caution and critical consideration. There has been a great deal of misinformation circulated by the opponents of this bill, with little basis in reality or appreciations of the goals of the legislation. A large number of messages are driven by a sophisticated, well-organized campaign that makes use of computer-generated emails. The vast majority of messages I have received are clearly linked to, uh, to automatically filled online forms, some of which contain totally untrue information about the bill. I would also like to note that many of those forms do not have any verification protection that ensures that they are real individuals sending these messages. I bring this up now only to urge caution. Our committee and our colleagues are carefully studying the modernization of the broadcasting for work, and this work is too important to be distracted by misinformation. The project of modernization has been considered for many years. A little known fact is that four years ago in 2018, Transport and Communications began a study on the modernization of the Broadcasting Act. And we, at that time, decided to defer our study to the ongoing Broadcasting Telecommunications Legislative Review that was done by the government. That panel studied this issue for two years before publishing its report titled Canada's Communications Future, Time to Act. That report was published in January 2020. And now here we are in 2022. The task at hand is important work because we are already late. I stand before you again almost a year and a half since C-10 was introduced to modernize the 1991 Broadcasting Act. At that time when I rose to introduce C-10, to you, I noted that the bill had already received considerable parliamentary input, with 112 days at committee stage uh, at the Standing Committee on Canadian Heritage, over 40 meetings and close to 50 witnesses, not counting the parliamentary briefings. The bill reflected the work done by parliamentarians and substantial input from industry and community stakeholders. With C-11, the Standing Committee on Heritage held an additional 28 me eight meetings with 46 briefs representing an input of 142 witnesses. Collectively, the interested parties have repeatedly recognized the need to modernize the Act, even as their opinions might differ on the details. In fact, all parties in the other place have signaled the modernization of the Broadcasting Act is a necessity. Whenever we talk about modernizing our broadcasting system, is an opportunity to ask ourselves big questions about how we are as Canadians, how we want to define our culture, our stories. It was the same in 1981 and even in 1982. I was in the other place at that time, as you know, I've been here for a long time. I was in the other place at that time and pushing to update the Act 
uh, at, that, at, that, at that time, where American program that was threatening to our power, overpower arts and cultures, the over, arts and culture center. Notre culture, c'est nous tous. C'est notre passé, c'est notre présent et c'est notre avenir. C'est comment on parle entre nous, entre nous autres. Colleagues, for more than 50 years, the Broadcasting Act has helped us share our stories. That's how we built our strong Canadian culture. That's how we forged our Canadian identity. And that's how we brought Canadian voices to the world. We want to build on this for the future. And so we must recognize that these times have changed. La dernière fois que notre système a été mis à jour, notre modèle était totalement différent. En 91, on a loué, on a loué nos films au Super Club Vidéotron, au Blockbuster. On avait des Walkmen. Il y a bien des choses qui ont changé en 30 ans. La diffusion continue en ligne a changé la façon de créer, de découvrir et de consommer du contenu. Il faut donc que notre système reflète cette réalité. Depuis des décennies, des radiodiffuseurs canadiens investissent dans le système pour créer du contenu qu'on aime tant. C'est une simple question d'équité que de demander aux diffuseurs en ligne de faire leur part. Des entreprises comme Netflix, Amazon et Disney investissent déjà dans l'économie canadienne et on aime ça. On aime ça qu'elles ont choisi de réaliser leurs projets au Canada. Faut être honnête, ils le font parce qu'il y a de talents, des talents incroyables chez nous. Ce que fait ce projet de loi, c'est de mettre à jour nos règles pour que l'ensemble des plateformes de diffusion continuent à contribuer à notre culture. Point. As this bill reaches us today, C11 has received more and more input. It was drafted to build upon the work done on C10 at the last session with minimal targeted changes and recalibrated a, a recalibrated approach to the social media. This bill has been updated to reflect the hard work of parliamentarians of all parties and caucuses. The government listened to the concerns and feedback from the last session and have updated the bill to address concerns surrounding user-generated content. It was further amendment at committee in the other place to strengthen protections on free speech. The Online Streaming Act is not about picking winners and losers. In the landscape of Canada's programming offers, it does offer as much as Canadians want. It does not compromise the personal freedoms of Canadians by censoring the Internet. In fact, it specifies in multiple places throughout the text of the bill that freedom of expression must be protected. I cannot express this enough. Freedom of expression in Canada will not be impacted by this act. What it does is simple. It updates our legislation that broadcast, so that the broadcasting framework in, Can in Canada accounts for the realities of modern broadcasting and ensures a level playing field for those commercial players that can materially contribute to its objectives. This legislation will update Canada's broadcasting rules to include online streaming services. It will require them to contribute in an equitable way to our culture. If you benefit from the system, you should need to contribute to it. Simple. Our chamber has an important role to play within our democratic process. We have been asked to examine the bill, to study its merits and aims, and understand how it will work. As you know, our chamber authorized the Standing Committee of Transport and Communications to pre-study this bill, and we've been doing it since June. We actually came in last week before this, the session started to have committee meetings. I am pleased to advise that we have begun that work, so we have now repeatedly heard from creative sector that we need to pass this bill without delay. We owe it to our hardworking artists and creators to pass this bill. We owe it to them to make sure that the online streamers who benefit from our system contribute to the strength and vitality of Canada's cultural sector. Let's remember, Canada's strong culture is not an accident. We made that decision. We made that call. We choose to be different. We choose to be different from our neighbors to the south. We choose cultural sovereignty. At a high level, the uh, Online uh, Streaming Act addresses many important issues. The Online Streaming Act advances the interests of Canada and Canadians in several ways. Canadian broadcasters are suffering financial loss because they are being forced to compete on an uneven regulatory playing field. Passing this bill is crucial for sustaining the economic ecosystem for Canadian culture, music and stories. It is needed to maintain our audiovisual production activity and keep our cultural industries working. It is recognized by music stakeholders as, a critical, as critical to supporting and making discoverable our music and stories. It, clears, it clear, creates dictated and intentional space within our broadcasting system 
for communities that are faced systematically marginalized for too long. Taking this work seriously includes getting it done, doing it right, and doing it urgently. The problem is that our broadcasting regulatory framework is out of date. This hurts our creative industries, doesn't serve the interests of Canadians or Canada, and limits our ability to realize the cultural broadcasting objectives that the Broadcasting Act is ultimately meant to support. These policy objectives are the instrument in shaping our Canadian culture. Digital disruption has happened and our legislation must adapt. The reality is that our broadcasting has dramatically changed since 19 1991. Digital disruption in the sector has brought about a change at an unprecedented pace, heightened by the pandemic. The traditional services of radio, television, and cable are still important players in the broadcasting system. Yet these days, most Canadians regularly use online streaming services like Netflix, Spotify, Crave, CBC Gem, Tribilico, and Discovery Plus to listen to their favorite songs, watch films, and television shows. La raison en était que ces services avaient relativement peu d'importance sur le secteur à l'époque, qui était euh, ce, ce qu'il était utile de permettre à des services innovants de se développer, dans ce qui était alors un, sec, un secteur naissant. Ce raisonnement n'est tout simplement plus valable. Il est temps que les services soient tenus de contribuer aux histoires canadiennes de la même manière que les radiodiffuseurs canadiens traditionnels le sont. More are coming, and these libraries are growing. They will see that we all know that what we all know is true. The Canadian market is lucrative. It's good to do business here in Canada. Online streamers compete directly with the regulatory broadcasters. In some cases, due to licensing the way Canadian consumers can view the latest and popular series like Bridgerton, Moon Knight, uh, Moon Knight uh, is, is thoroughly streaming services. Even Kim's Convenience, con co content commissioned by the CBC, is being watched by Canadians on platforms like Netflix instead of on a Canadian service like GEM. I've been waiting a year to read it, so it's still a little bit tough. Yet, And yet streaming services are not presently required to support the broadcasting system as their Canadian broadcasting counterparts are. They are benefiting from the Canadian market, but have no obligations to contribute back into it. This is a problem that requires urgent action and one that the Online Streaming Act directly addresses. This is not a quick cash grab or a punishment to those who have enjoyed success in an unregulated environment. Canadians stream two, million, two billion songs in a single week. I repeat, Canadians uh, stream two billion songs in a single week using services like Spotify and Apple Music. We know that there, there is a market for legitimately sourced music in Canada, ensuring that Canadians are, paired, are paid and their music is played. This is about updating our laws and regulations to provide rules for our broadcasting system that makes sense today and for tomorrow. It's about providing the certainty and structure for sustainable future success. We've heard from critics of this bill that we are trying to fit new technology into an out outdated regulatory model. That could not be further from the truth. The Online Streaming Act would modernize Canada's broadcasting system, realigning our, realigning our country's cultural priorities and full future-proofing the framework as new technologies will inevitably arise. And we know that technology advancements can be happening at light speed. Just think that when we were debating C10 last year, TikTok was a very different pl platform than what it is today. We need to build a system that will have the flexibility to adapt to new technology, and it is precisely what C11 will accomplish. We've heard from Canadian broadcasters and producers that continue, that continue to, dull, to duly contribute to Canada's culture sector uh, and how they compete at a disadvantage with the entities that exist outside of our regulatory framework. I wrote this in 92 on the subject of broadcasting modernization. Unless new policy initiatives are introduced, the industry is at risk in the face of new technologies and global competition, which could destroy the infrastructure of Canadian program production. Technological innovation does not stop. We again face a challenge by new technology and global competition. And again, I'm calling for the modernization of our regulatory regime. Honorable Senators, we are faced with an important task, writing the regulatory asymmetry between tradition and online broadcast undertakings has been delayed for too long. 
the process around modernizing the Broadcasting Act has seen remarkable debate, filibustering, and unreasonable claims of imagined breaches of our charter. These have been obscured. These have obscured the real issues. I think it's enough. Il est temps de passer aux solutions. Nous devons relever le défi réglementaire dès maintenant, en exigeant que les services radio diffusion audio et vidéo en ligne contribuent à la réalisation d'importants objectifs politiques culturels de la même manière que les radio diffuseurs traditionnels l'ont toujours fait. Rappelons qu'en vertu de la loi sur la radio diffusion de 91, les chaînes de radio et de télévision ainsi que les entreprises de distribution par câble et par satellite devaient être détenues et contrôlées par des Canadiens et détenir des licences. Elles pouvaient, elles, elles, peuvent, elles, pouvaient, elles peuvent toujours diffuser des émissions provenant d'un marché international ou transmettre même des chaînes américaines. En contrepartie de leur participation au système canadien et de leur accès au marché national, ils étaient tenus de financer, d'acquérir et de diffuser des émissions canadiennes. Ils étaient également tenus de rendre des émissions accessibles aux Canadiens et de contribuer à la création d'émissions canadiennes, y compris, bien entendu, en français. This was intentional, and it worked. Our broadcasting system saw an increase in demand for Canadian programs, and our creative talent flourished, and our cultural industries saw predictable investments on which they could plan, build, and grow. The Online Streaming Act brings online broadcasters under similar rules and requirements as our traditional broadcasters. Because unlike traditional Canadian broadcasters, platforms perform from our culture but have no obligations to contribute to it. And with money leaving the traditional broadcasters to go to these platforms, this is putting our creators, our industry, and our jobs at risk. We have to act. Colleagues, our system must also pave the way for new and upcoming Canadian artists. For decades, our current system introduced us to incredible artists that we all love. Many of them now share their art around the world. Anne of Green Gables, the tragically hip, crazy Drake, Cal Charlotte Cadrin, Laura Fabian, Sean Mendes, District 31, Schitt's Creek. We all know the list of Canadian successes. We want to make sure that our children and future generations grow up as we did, having the chance to watch our stories and listen to our songs. La culture est une forme d'expression puissante et fondamentale. Elle nous permet de vivre ensemble des moments et des sentiments et des rêves. Elle nous permet de bâtir une identité commune et elle a la portée et une influence plus grande que jamais. On doit pouvoir se reconnaître en elle. Nous autres, les francophones en partout, en, 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 partout au pays, on compte là-dessus. Notre système, notre langue, notre culture en dépend. Si on veut que les enfants parlent notre langue, on a besoin d'une culture forte. Et pour ça, il faut un système juste et équitable. Colleagues, the primary role of the renewed approach to regulation is to provide sustainable support to Canadian music and stories in the years ahead. The bill aims for fair treatment of programs consumed on different platforms, regardless of how they are transmitted. New legislation will shift away from issuing broadcasting license to a new conditions of service model. This will allow the CRTC to seek contributions from, from other uh, 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 related to the discoverability and, sorry, and to the showcasing of programs. Canada's music stakeholders have expressed that the bill addresses their need for creative support and desire to be fairly promoted online. In this framework, broadcasting undertaking, including online undertakings, will be required to make financial contributions to support Canadians, music, stories, creators, and producers. There are two notable teams in the bill that merit some clear and specific mention. They are the treatment of digital first creators and the recalibrated approach to social media. Digital first creators will never face any, I repeat, will never face any obligations under the Online Streaming Act. In other words, a producer of audiovisual content that is primarily produced and intended for online distribution as a user up uploaded content on social media services will be excluded. There has been fear mongering that the bill would create a world where 30% of a digital first creator's revenues will have to be will have to contribute to an art fund. This is simply not true. There is no question about individual creators being asked to forfeit a portion of their revenues. We have been clear from the beginning. It is disappointing that the opposition continues to speculate wildly on alarming, far-reaching hypotheticals that simply will never happen. Some social media platforms may have to contribute, yes, 
but the revenue, revenues of digital first creators will not be included in the calculation of social media platforms, of, of their revenues for the purpose of financial contribution. Content from digital first creators will not face any obligation related to showcasing and discoverability. Despite some low vocal critics of this issue, the concern of Canadians, digital first creators, have been listened to. They have told us that they do not want to be part of this framework. They will be exempt, and I am confident that the policy direction to the CRTC will, this ma will make this extra clear. A recalibrated approach to social media, le contenu est téléchargé par les Canadiens sur des revenus de médias sociaux comme Facebook et YouTube ne sera pas soumis à des obligations, sauf dans les circonstances clairement définies, comme les, les articles 4.2 de la loi. La loi sur la diffusion continue en ligne permet seulement au CRTC d'imposer des obligations aux services de médias sociaux qu'à la catégorie de contenu commercial, comme la musique commerciale. La législation prévoit trois facteurs que le CRTC doit prendre en compte pour identifier les émissions commerciales. Il prendra en considération le montant des revenus générés par les émissions, s'il est offerte par d'autres diffuseurs ou qu'elle soit traditionnelle ou en ligne, comme Netflix ou Spotify, et si le contenu s'est vu attribuer un numéro de code normé international. Les émissions diffusées sur les médias sociaux qui ne génèrent pas de revenus pour le téléchargeur ou de le détenteur de droits ne seront jamais réglementées. La raison de l'inclusion de ces dispositions est simple. Une chanson de Céline Dion doit être traitée sur YouTube comme, comme elle l'est sur Spotify. C'est vraiment simple. A new approach to social media response to concerns about freedom of expression. At the same time, it takes into account that music is largely distributed and broadcasted online. More and more, we are seeing social media companies broadcast commercial content. YouTube Music is a prime example. That's why this bill includes important updates but will, that will only focus on relevant types of commercial content. In fact, a study conducted by Media Technology Monitor in 2020 found that about two-thirds of Canadian adults use YouTube to listen to music, which outpaces dedicated music services such as Apple Music and Spotify. The proposed amendments to the Online Streaming Act regarding social media will not apply to content uploaded by users or to users themselves. They will only apply to commercial content based on these specific criteria. This responds to the needs of music stakeholders who stated that the platforms who broadcast commercial music must contribute to the system. The minister met with social media content creators, including YouTubers and other digital creators, and heard their concerns. And here at the Senate, we are continuing to listen to them. These creators share incredible, incredible content with audience here in Canada and around the world. But this bill is not about them and will not require them to do anything new. And if I haven't been crystal clear on this yet, let me add that once and for all that this bill has gone through parliamentary process and received, after it's gone through parliamentary process and received royal land, it will be made even more clear to the regulatory through a policy directive that this legislation does not touch users, only streaming platforms. Platforms are in, users are out. I want to be absolutely clear, this law will never control what Canadians can or cannot see online. We will always be able to choose what we listen to and what we watch. Users are not broadcasters, their content will not be regulated, and the individual online creators will not be regulated. Again, the principle is simple. Platforms are in, users are not. In sum, the new approach to social media online streaming will ensure that social media services contribute to the Canadian broadcasting system, when appropriate and fair, while respecting rights and freedoms and choices of Canadians. To help understand why action is urgently needed, let us review the current economic reality in the sector. Broadcasting is an important economic driver, which supports Canadian creative services and the evolving cultural identity. Together, Canada's broadcasting film and video and music recording sectors contribute 14 billion to Canada's GDP and over 160,000 jobs. That's in 2019. Pourtant, au cours des dix dernières années, le, le taux abonné au service de diffusion en continu est passé de 6 à 78 des Canadiens. Même si on limitait aux dernières années les services de diffusion en continu, ont connu une croissance rapide et substantielle de leurs revenus, alors que les radiodiffuseurs radio traditionnels 
ont vu leurs revenus diminuer. This is no surprise. After all, we know that the world of broadcasting has changed. In addition to this new reality, Canada's broadcasting sector is facing long-term cultural structural challenges. Without intervention, current trends in the market are expected to result in a decline in the production of Canadian television content by approximately half a billion dollars within the next five years. That means there will, there will be 13% less Canadian television production in 2025 than there was in 2020. And in 2020, we had already seen a 320 million drop in production from the 2018 levels. We have learned from our witnesses at committee that, for example, the first time there are more, more householders <laughs> in Quebec with online subscriptions than traditional television service. And that online streaming market is overwhelmingly dominated by foreign players outside Canada's regulatory framework. Selon un sondage mené par Léger pour la Disque, dont nous avons entendu, 60% de la population québécoise cite la radio comme étant un outil de découverte musicale. Mais en même temps, 61% des gens écoutent maintenant de la musique par le biais des services en ligne, services qui échappent à toute réglementation. Au Québec, 8% des pistes écoutées sur les plateformes en ligne sont en français. Sustainable long-term support for the system is required to enable ongoing success for Canadian creators, producers and broadcasters. This is what this modernization is about. This is what the online streaming act will achieve. The set quo is inacceptable. Cultural policy is a main element of this legislation. Ensuring the continued viability of the Canadian broadcasting is also about our cultural sovereignty. Culture can play a role in the process of truth-telling and reconciliation of, with Indigenous people and healing. Diversity and inclusion are, Canada, are Canadian values, and they must be the elements of our cultural policy. This is a key pillar of the new Online Streaming Act. Ce sont là quelques-unes des questions sur la politique culturelle que la loi sur la diffusion en continu en ligne aborde. Améliorer l'équité de notre système de rediffusion signifie être plus inclusif, soutenir les gangs pains des artistes et des créateurs canadiens et enrichir la vie des Canadiens qui veulent, avoir, qui veulent voir davantage à l'écran des contenus canadiens. Racialization, racialized Canadians, women and LGBT Cube uh, people and persons, with the, and persons with disability deserve to have space in order to tell their stories to other Canadians and to the world. The amendments adopted at the committee and the other place further enshrine the importance of everybody being reflected in our broadcasting system. The claims that the space, uh, the, this bill claims that the space and makes sure that online streaming platforms contribute to Canadian culture. Là, en ce moment, nos diffuseurs canadiens sont soumis à un ensemble de règles pendant que les plateformes de diffusion continue sont soumises à un autre ensemble de règles totalement différentes. This legislation provides real gains for Canadians, including community med media and local news, French language production and racialized communities, third language program and so much more. Importantly, this legislation also takes steps, also takes steps to ensure space within our broadcasting system for indigenous storytelling and indigenous languages. Ça devrait être équitable pour tout le monde. C'est exactement ce que veut faire la loi avec la diffusion en continu. Parce que si tu profites du système, tu contribues au système, point. Honorable Senator, let's walk through the process that will happen after this bill receives royal assent. The government will issue a policy direction to the CRTC to indicate our priorities when it comes to putting in place the new regulatory framework. The policy direction has two primary goals. First, it will focus on the importance of consultation and special consideration of the needs of equity-seeking groups. Second, the direction will make clear the areas where regulation is needed, as well as the areas where it should be exercised. After the policy direction is published, all stakeholders, including members of the public, will have ample, ample opportunity to participate in the regulatory process and provide their feedback. Let me emphasize we are putting in place a regulatory process like in other sectors. That means there will be publication of the proposed policy direction, followed by public consultation and then final policy direction. This would be fu a fully collaborative process with online platforms, traditional media and creators, as well as the general public. The CRTC in turn will have its own public process as, as it further develops to implement the legislation. This will be done within the clear limits established by the legislation 
and in keeping with the policy direction provided by the government. Canada can be a leader on the global stage for innovative measures that benefit Canadians, Canada's creative industries and grow its economic and economy in a fast-moving digital and data-driven world. The on Online Streaming Act seizes the opportunity to support our dynamic cultural sector in an ever-changing digital context. This bill and its outcomes will serve our, uh, as examples of how well-thought-out policy mechanism can resu result in positive changes for years to come. We need good outcomes, especially for our Canadian artists and creators and our broadcasters who have waited too long for this to occur. The time to act on these measures is overdue. While some critics say that we are trying to focus on a moving target, that is a misconception. The government is looking to the future, to how we can support our culture, not just maintain the status quo, but challenge it in the interest of Canadian creatives. I want to spend a couple of minutes clarifying what the bill will not do. The Online Streaming Act is not about regulating the internet. It will not affect Canadians' ability to use the internet. The bill does not apply to the content generated by Canadians on their favorite social media platforms. The CRT does not and will not have the power and or ability to have content removed from an individual social media feed or personal website. This is not the purpose of, act of the bill C-11. Clearly, the bill clearly outlines the regulator will have no power to regulate everyday use of social media by Canadians. Let me be clear, the government will not regulate users, online creators, through the bill or the policy directive. The act is not about censoring personal videos or social media or political discord, nor is it about taxing them. It is about Canadian culture and our cultural industry. Not digital first creators, not influencers, not users, only the online streaming companies themselves will have new responsibilities, responsibilities under the Online Streaming Act. That is the goal, and this is the objective to the bill to attain these goals. For instance, let's consider a service base for, in the Philippines as an example, since there have been concerns raised at the committee. The Filipino Challenge channel, TFC, streams content in Tagalog and has been presented as a popular service for hundreds of thousands of Tagalog-speaking Canadians across the country. I want to assure everybody that services like TFC will not be hindered by the Act, and there is certainly nothing in this legislation that would cause the TFC to block Canadian, Canadians from accessing its services. Que veut-on accomplir? Ce projet de loi vise à traiter tous les radiodiffuseurs de manière équitable, qu'il s'agisse de services de diffusion continue ou de radiodiffuseurs traditionnels. C'est notre objectif principal. Tous services utilisés par les distributeurs d'émissions commerciales, que ce soit dans nos foyers ou dans nos voitures ou dans nos poches, sera tenu à contribuer aux histoires et à la musique canadienne. The Online, Streaming Act will break, the Online Streaming Act brings with it many opportunities. It presents the chance to achieve greater diversity of perspectives, make and cement gains for many communities, and ensure inclusive support within our broadcasting sector. To provide greater diversity of perspectives and to incl an inclusive service, and inclusive support to that represent and align our communities, Canadians with diverse backgrounds must see a broadcasting system that reflects the importance of diversity and inclusion. C11 strengthens our broadcasting system by including explicit broadcasting policy objectives requiring that it should include all Canadians. Another strengthened objective requires that accessibility and barrier-free program be provided. Accessible and inclusive broadcasting is not an afterthought. They are the foundational pillars to build on. En matière de diversité et d'inclusion, un des objectifs du projet est de mettre l'accent sur les voix diverses et, mar et marginalisées. Historiquement, ces voix ont été sous-représentées dans notre système de radiodiffusion. On veut, entendre le, on veut étendre le choix de contenu pour tous les téléspecteurs et les auditeurs qui se retrouvent difficilement au contenu reflétant leur réalité. Pour atteindre cet objectif, le système de radiodiffusion doit soutenir et promouvoir des émissions et des créateurs issus de la communauté et d'origine diverse. Le broadcasting system cannot be made current without ensuring that all Canadians from diverse communities and backgrounds can see themselves reflected and supported. While some lament that niche markets will be lost, this is not true. The proposed legislation makes space for all. It cements that we are a country that is not only, that only, invi not only invites diversity, but encourages and supports its creation. 
It is modernizing our approach to Canadian culture in an increasingly digital world. La législation doit être modifiée pour assurer que la radiodiffusion au Canada évolue avec le cadre de l'espace nécessaire pour les Canadiens qui sont issus des communautés francophones, autochtones, racisées ou qui, et, et, qui représentent, et qui représentent la diversité au nom de leurs antécédents ethnoculturels, leur statut socio-économique et leur aptitude et handicap leur orientation sexuelle et leur identité ou leur expression de genre ou de leur âge doivent toutes être représentées. Et la loi, continue, et la loi de, 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 de diffusion continue en ligne propose de faire cela. Bill C-11 removes the previous limitations as resources become available for persons with respect to providing programs that reflect the indigenous culture of Canada within our broadcasting system. I am pleased that the amendments adopted in the other place in, in last, last spring go further in enshrining the importance of Indigenous stories in our broadcasting system. This is, as it should be, long overdue. New technologies and platforms Canadian revitalization of Indigenous languages, and it saddens me to see too many Indigenous languages on the brink of extinction. Ensuring space for Indigenous people to have narrative sovereignty is important and will support our efforts to re revitalize Indigenous languages. Modernizing the Act will include changes to help Indigenous peoples tell their stories from their viewpoint and to see themselves represented in our broadcasting system. Bill, this bill emphasizes the importance of Indigenous controlled broadcasting services and production. And APTN was in front of the committee this week and strongly support the passage of this legislation. French language programming is a cornerstone of our broadcasting future. The Projet de loi Séance renforce le contenu et la production originale de langue française qui ne devrait pas s'appuyer uniquement sur le doublage ou le sous-titrage. Les radiodiffuseurs tant traditionnels qu'en ligne doivent mettre en priorité le contenu original de langue française sur leur plateforme. Des voix se lèvent de plus en plus pour noter que l'offre étrangère est majoritairement en anglais et est disproportionnée par rapport à l'offre et contenu de production originale en français. Et pourtant, les besoins pour les communautés francophones sont très importants partout au pays. The government listened to the concerns raised by the previous par in the previous parliament and updated the act to better enshrine these measures in legislation. La loi sur la diffusion continue en ligne renforce le contenu de la production originale de langue française en précisant que, en précisant, la radiodiffusion au Canada doit soutenir la production et la radiodiffusion des émissions originales de langue française. Le CRTC doit soutenir l'offre des émissions canadiennes créées et produites en français. Le CRTC a le pouvoir d'émettre des conditions de service, dont celles concernant la proportion d'émissions originales de langue française. En tant que sénateur du Québec, il est particulièrement important pour moi d'assurer un soutien continu au marché québécois des médias audiovisuels. En particulier, j'aimerais mettre l'accent sur la réalité francophone et les anglophones en situation minoritaire. La dualité linguistique au Canada est ancrée dans notre système canadien de radiodiffusion. La législation, la législation répond aux nouveaux besoins et intérêts propres aux communautés francophones et anglophones en situation minoritaire qui demandent dorénavant d'être identifiés et nommés dans la loi afin d'assurer leur épanouissement et leur développement à long terme. Je vois que mon ami René Cormier sourit parce que je pense que c'est une revendication de son milieu qui a été entendue dans l'autre chambre, qui va être réentendue dans notre chambre, mon cher collègue. La loi sur la diffusion continue en ligne contient des objectifs pour la communauté francophone et anglophone en situation minoritaire. La législation clarifie que toute interprétation de l'application de la loi doit respecter la, la volonté du gouvernement fédéral de mettre en valeur l'épanouissement de ces communautés ainsi que de soutenir leur développement. La reconnaissance et l'usage des langues officielles dans la société canadienne. Le CRTC doit par parallèlement mettre en valeur la présentation des missions créées et produites par les communautés en plus de prendre en compte les besoins et les intérêts qui lui sont propres. Le système de radiodiffusion, y compris les nouveaux joueurs en ligne, constitue des vaisseaux indispensables pour la transmission de la langue et de la culture au Canada. Honorable Senators, chers collègues, we must act now. Though the pa through the pandemic, our artists have been a source of inspiration, breeding life and support into our diverse communities daily. They revitalize the spirit of our culture. They elevate it with resolve that what constitutes our heritage as Canadians. On l'a dit, on l'a vu, on l'a vécu. La COVID-19 a accéléré notre, notre transition en ligne, même pour nous au Sénat. La distanciation physique a poussé les Canadiens vers des plateformes et des services à diffusion en ligne. 
les Canadiens communiquent avec leurs amis et leurs familles en ligne. Des millions de personnes font du télétravail. Des étudiants prennent leurs cours en ligne. Et beaucoup s'évadent de temps en temps pendant les temps difficiles grâce à la musique et aux séries et aux films en ligne. Canadian artists and creators are facing many pandemic-related challenges that have severely limited their revenue streams for almost two years. An imbalanced system with unequal obligations is only making this situation worse for our artists, creators, and for our culture. With fewer resources, fewer opportunities, and fewer productions, Canadian music and stories will become harder and harder to find. Without intervention, current trends in the market are expected to result in a decline in the production of Canadian television content of almost a billion dollars by 2023 compared to 2018. This is only a measure of the economic loss. The truth is our cultural identity is at stake. Un espace culturel distinct nous permet de se parler et de se comprendre et de bâtir une identité canadienne. Ça nous aide à trouver ensemble des solutions aux enjeux nationaux. Au fur et à mesure que cet espace s'érode, nos liens s'effacent. Nos histoires, nos valeurs, nos perspectives s'estompent. Notre diversité commence à disparaître car les voix francophones, anglophones et autochtones s'affaiblissent. Les productions venant des femmes, des communautés racisées, des communautés LGBTQ2+, et des personnes handicapées sont de plus en plus menacées par le manque d'espace pour s'épanouir. Ne pas agir, ce n'est pas une option. On a agi et on va agir encore pour protéger notre culture, nos emplois, nos créateurs et les intérêts canadiens. La loi sur la radiodiffusion continue en ligne contribuera directement à la vitalité de la culture canadienne. On veut que les diffuseurs en ligne fassent leur juste part dans le financement ou la création ou la production de distribution de contenu d'ici. Ce qu'on veut ici, c'est que les diffuseurs en ligne mettent en valeur des émissions en anglais, en français et dans les langues autochtones réalisées ici au Canada. Qu'ils appuient la diversité de toutes les étapes de production à travers une plus grande représentation des femmes, des communautés racisées, des communautés LGBT et des personnes handicapées. La loi permettra d'assurer l'avenir de la radiodiffusion canadienne en plus de promouvoir et protéger notre souveraineté. Les secteurs canadiens de radiodiffusion et de cinéma et de production télévisuelle constituent un élément important de l'économie canadienne. En 2020, les secteurs de l'audiovisuel et des médias interactifs ont ajouté plus que 19 milliards de dollars au PIB du Canada et soutenu 160 000 emplois. La loi contribuera à maintenir la compétitivité de ce secteur vital de notre économie et c'est essentiel alors qu'on ouvre les industries créatives en toute sécurité et qu'on les aide à s'adapter à la prospérité. It is clear that we need to modernize the Broadcasting Act. The bill has broad support across Canada's cultural industries. Wherever this bill is in the public interest, it is about making sure that we continue to uphold Canadian values in our society as technology and consumer habits evolve. After all, we are not citizens, we are also consumers. I look forward to continuing our study on the Inline Streaming Act at the committee, including tonight where it can receive considerable, a careful consideration that, that I know it deserves. Comme à l'habitude de dire le ministre du patrimoine canadien, une journée sans culture serait ennuyeuse. J'ajouterais qu'un pays sans culture serait désolant. This legislation is a result of several years of hard work and consultations on the part of Canadians, industry stakeholders and parliamentarians. I want to thank them all for their thoughtful insight and hard work. And while we start the debate at this very important legislation, let's remember that at the end of the day, this is about updating our system to reflect today's digital reality. Things have changed. Streaming platforms are the new big players. This bill makes sure that everyone contributes in a similar and equitable way to our culture. The objectives of our cultural policy broadcasting system have not changed. It's about fairness. It's about good middle-class jobs in the cultural center. It's about having the power to shape our own culture. It's about making sure that everyone can see ourselves in our culture. It's about being proud of who we are, of being Canadians. Ensemble, on donne un bel avenir à la culture canadienne et aux artistes créateurs de chez nous. On donne aux Canadiens l'espace dont ils ont besoin pour se parler, se comprendre et partager leur art ici et à travers le monde. On crée des bases solides pour le Canada à l'ère numérique. L'Internet amène beaucoup d'autres défis. 
mais on, on ne peut pas faire face aussi longtemps qu'il y a les règles dépassées qui excluent certaines personnes et laissent d'autres derrière. On doit agir de manière décisive pour protéger notre économie, notre culture. So today I invite all senators to stand up for Canadian culture and support this legislation. Thank you. Merci, Miguel. Honourable Senator, uh, Senator Dawson, time has expired. However, we have exactly two minutes before we adjourn. So if you are in agreement, I have on my list Senator Tannis, Senator Batters. So in two minutes, do the maximum. If, if Senator Dawson will take it, question. Senator Tannis. Thank you. Um, uh, Senator Dawson, I hope you'll take a question. You mentioned that uh, uh, 61 percent of Quebecers use a streaming service for music uh, in addition to the radio. Um, but only 8 percent of the music that they choose uh, is, is Canadian content. So, sorry? Oh, it's French. So under the rules, uh, would you, uh, would we be empowering some government body to force people to listen to more than 8%? Is there anything in there? And, and this could be used for, you know, Spotify in other parts of the country. Radio, it's, there's mandatory 30% must be Canadian content. Is that what's going to happen? Are we going to have um, folks being told what to listen to on Spotify because they haven't listened to enough Canadian content? You just uh, provide some assurance on that. Madam la Présidente, ça va? Contrary to the old system, we don't have those 30% quotas, we don't have those... The, and I, again, the situation has changed so much that even those, those quotas exist, they're not uh, obviously being respected. So, no, there will be no obligation, there will be encouragement, there will be negotiations between the CRTC and the big players so that they can find ways to put Canadian content French Canadian content, multi multicultural content on their their platforms, but no, no forcing of anybody to do anything, and certainly nothing that will attack freedom. Freedom is guaranteed in this act, and it will be respected. 